everybody welcome to cooking with Carolyn now if you follow me on Facebook you'll know that I spent last week the week of July 4th getting ready for my uncle Ellis's annual summer bash now that means that's gonna be a huge undertaking because he invites about 300 of his family and close friends you heard me 300 so all the planning and everything as far as the food had to be done ahead of time so everything can come out right so as far as the food he wanted barbecue ribs chicken links and smoked brisket so you'll see that throughout the footage what I really wanted to do was give you an idea as far as how to plan uh, what you want to have and then a beautiful tablescape you're gonna see in the footage that Cisco did beautiful tablescape as far as adding height and dimension to a table can just give it a whole new look so I wanted you guys to be able to see that so I got some footage throughout the week from Tuesday to Saturday so that you can see all the work that kind of goes into a party this large and see if you actually want to take it on yourself alright so take a look and see how everything came out so every party has to start somewhere of course this one is gonna start at our local restaurant supply store this store has everything you need from your dry goods to cheeses and dairy every type of meat from chicken to beef and pork, your seafoods, everything is there that you need. We walked away with 40 slabs of ribs, 55 pounds of brisket, 6 cases of hot links, and 3 cases of chicken. So out of all the meat that we purchased, I knew exactly which one was going to give me a way to go. The 3 cases of chicken, which was actually 42 chickens cut into pieces. So here you see me cleaning out the sink because I have to put that chicken in the sink and get it all nice and clean. Now this salt is not for seasoning. This salt is strictly for cleaning. This is kosher salt that I'm putting on the chicken so that it can help me pull some of that slippery uh, film that is under some of that skin. I'm gonna go through each piece and make sure that most of that is removed. See, slip your fingers up under the skin and pull that slippery film that's under there. It's crucial to go through all of the chicken because a lot of chicken um, in these cases can still have feathers attached and just as I thought, look, that's why we clean chicken. I found quite a few feathers on the thighs for the most part, but that's exactly why you go through the chicken and give it a nice cleaning. And four and a half hours later, I was done. The chicken was then divided into food grade plastic bags and seasoned with Grand Diamond Seasoning, which you can get at gdseasoning.com. And I'm using this uh, along with root beer to give it a nice marinade. Once Friday arrived, it was time to cook all of the main entrees. As you can see, I had the chicken going. I took it out of the root beer marinade Reseasoned it lightly with Grand Diamond All Purpose Seasoning again and then put it on the grill to cook. Those are my uncle's hands. He's checking the fire to see how low it is. He's trying to gauge how long the chicken is going to take to cook. Once the chicken gets closer to being done, you're going to grab your internal thermometer and you're going to start taking the temperature of the chicken. That chicken had such flavor. It, it was just juicy. I'm telling you, that is the way to go when you're trying to marinate chicken over a period of time. Also the night before, I seasoned all of the slabs of ribs. I held this one back to cook it so we can see how they were going to taste. And they came out really good, so I didn't have to re-season or anything like that. These ribs took about three and a half to four hours over super, super low heat. So that's a, that's a gauge, and of course you still want to use your internal thermometer to gauge how the meat is doing when it's cooking. Here I'm just brushing the spare ribs with equal parts of root beer and champagne vinegar. On the day of the party, it was time to slice all the brisket that D'Artagnan so lovingly smoked on his Traeger machine. That brisket, I will tell you, was some of the best brisket I have ever had. As you can see, it's much easier to slice while it's cold. So I sliced all the meat before we reheated it in perfect portions so that everybody could have a slice. 
Look at that perfect smoke ring around that meat. It was so tender and just so tasty. Crab salad was one of the items in the hors d'oeuvre bar. And what I'm doing is I'm going through the crab meat to make sure they don't have any shells or anything like that. You want to search through the crab meat for any objects. You don't want them in your salad. This is one of the recipes we're going to be doing soon together. I love this crab salad. It's so easy and so quick. There is James putting his foot in the barbecue sauce. He's doing his own little special twist to it. So here is Cisco with this beautiful tablescape I was telling you about. Cisco is not only creative as an individual, but he also works for a company called Good Gracious. They specialize in foods and event planning. All of their information is below, so if you're in the LA area, you might want to give them a call. Once he was done with the setup, I was able to go back in and place all the food. As you can see, we had quite a spread. Downstairs was sort of a Mardi Gras theme going on. And on the tables, we put one ounce packages of peanuts for people to enjoy during cocktail hour. It kind of keeps those questionable fingers out of those random bowls of nuts, if you know what I'm talking about. At this point, the guests are starting to arrive. Everybody's excited. They're taking pictures, they're chit-chatting, and they're having a cocktail. And there he is, the man of the hour, Uncle Ellis. The hors d'oeuvres were served around 5.30, and as you can see, everybody was ready to eat. Hopefully you guys were able to get a few ideas for your next party. And just a couple of shots of some items you didn't see. Those baked beans that James worked on, they had pineapple in them and you know what? They were good. <laughs> and then those ribs, I'm telling you, fell off the bone. I'll see you guys next time.